The earth is on fire. What are we doing about it? Well, let's alert the children. You know, and uh, don't kid yourself. Here's the Environmental Protection Agency's website for kids at school. What you can do, um, basically, see if uh, look around your classroom, see if uh, you can put in better insulation around the windows there, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, recycle cans. You know, the main driving force, what those kids are being served in the lunchroom, is never mentioned. <clears throat> So these are the problems. What are the answers? Where lies hope? As Francis Moore Pace says, hope doesn't come from calculating whether good news is winning over bad news. Hope is simply a choice to take action. That is the antidote for our despair. So where lies hope? What actions can you take? Three things we can all do, educate ourselves, transform our buying and eating habits, and then organize to magnify uh, the power we have to make things better. So let's talk about educating ourselves. The simple fact that holds the key to our salvation is this. Since fe feeding humans directly with whole plant foods is so much more efficient than growing and feeding grains and feeding them to animals and then slaughtering and eating the animals, because most of the energy in those grains is one passed out the back end of the animal in manure, or is burned off in heat from the animal just walking around, or it's turned into inedible body parts, into a hair and hide and bones and blood and things that people don't eat. Uh, just a tiny amount turns into animal flesh that people consume. <clears throat> and as a result, a transition to a predominantly plant-based diet and their food sources could feed all the 9 billion people who are going to be on earth in 2050. We can feed them a nourishing diet on about a quarter of the current land. All right, let's put it graphically here. <clears throat> to feed one person the standard American diet with meat at every meal requires two football fields of land and the energy, uh, the water, electricity, et cetera, uh, every year, okay? But two football fields. Those same two football fields, if they are, were planted in grains and beans and fruits and vegetables could feed 14 people, okay? So if everyone in the world ate a plant-based diet, five billion football fields worth of land could be returned to forests. So what would happen if the world went plant-based overnight, the world's people? Mm -hmm. Well, we'd have no need for animals or their food. That would free up a land area the size of Africa. Let that sink in for a minute. And only 20% of this land would be needed to grow food. <clears throat> Therefore, of the remaining three-fourths of the current crop land, and pasture land not growing food for people, let the forest come back on that. And as the tree grows, as the trees grow, they take carbon out of the air. That's all we need to do. Evolve our diets to a plant-based one and let the trees grow back. It's called rewilding. We, you know, we have perpetrated the greatest theft on the natural world. Well, now we tie, it's time to do reparations. You know, like the jewel thief, you know, drops off the, the, the diamond bracelet, you know, a week later out of guilt. We need to do the same thing here and, and drop back the jewels of the natural world called the forest and the waters. And here's, here's why it works. <clears throat> As I, you might remember that I mentioned that since uh, we Homo sapiens been cutting down the trees and burning them, we've released 240 gigatons, those are billions of tons, 240 gigatons into the earth, into the atmosphere since 1750. Well, if we go to a plant-based diet and let those forests come back on just half the land, uh, the, the, you know, remember the African sign, you know, you know only 20% to grow land. Um, if, if only half the land is dedicated back to forests, that will sequester 265 gigatons. That's way more than the 240 gigatons that we're, we, we've released into the air by cutting down the forest. So it works. All we need to do is let those lands now devoted to growing animal flesh 
let, let them now grow trees. And as the trees grow, global warming gets reversed and we have a rosier future. These numbers and ideas show us that the physics and biology exists to, to permit all of us on earth to thrive nutritionally by rapidly evolving our diets to predominantly plant-based ones. All we need is the societal understanding of the desirability, actually the necessity of this transformation and the political will to do it. <clears throat> so number one, we gotta start educating ourselves. If you've not seen videos called Cowspiracy and Seaspiracy, please see them. If you have not read a book called Comfortably Unaware, which I'll show you in a minute, get that book and read it. I urge you to go to the website of climatehealers.org and join them and go to Extinction Rebellion and uh, educate yourself on that powerful message that they share. And join Jim Hicks's uh, Four Leaf program. It's a really simple, direct way to get people you love to consider uh, changing their diet to a plant-based one. Now, I mentioned uh, Comfortably Unaware by Dr. Richard Oppenlander, such a powerful book. Go to his website, comfortablyunaware.com, see the videos there, now, but read this magnificent book that will lay out the parameters in no uncertain terms. And if you don't have time to read Dr. Oppenlander's book, please, Glenn Mercer did us such a favor by creating this little book of 60 pages. You can read it in two hours called Food is Climate. And he makes such a powerful argument uh, to the standard platitudes for reversing global warming, electric cars, solar panels, the things that Al Gore and Bill Gates and Paul Hawken are all promoting. Uh, none of them are really serious about the underlying driving problem here. Uh, Glenn Mercer cuts <laughs> and pulls no punches uh, as he makes it very clear. I urge you, get this little book and read it. So my message is the time to stop eating animals has come. We have used it up. And as Oppenlander and Mercer make very clear all other plans to mitigate climate change are doomed to fail, and so are we, if we don't include the cessation of producing, uh, the cessation of producing and eating animals. Say so it really, I think Dr. Oppenlander said, look, you can put solar panels on every, everyone's houses. You can give everybody an electric car. We'll make zero difference if we continue to eat a meat-based diet. Right, let me make that clear. You can put solar panels on everybody's house. You can give everyone an electric car. will make zero difference. The planet will continue to heat. The ice caps will continue to melt. Uh, the, the permafrost will continue to burn uh, unless we change our diet. We've used animal eating up. Mahatma Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world. Okay, it really comes down to transforming ourselves. So uh, go to climatehealers.org and uh, join that organization. And Dr. Rao's message is to us, it's time for us to change our entire role on this planet. We have been the conqueror, the plunderer, the predator. Whatever we want, we cut it down, we kill it, we take it. Uh, we've been a predator species, homo sapiens. We now have to transform ourselves into the caretaker species, <clears throat> homo ahimsa, life of nonviolence. <clears throat> um, you know, it's uh, the people who use the Bible as the uh, justification, we can do whatever we want, we have dominion over the animals. I would just point out that dominion comes from the same Latin root, dominus uh, as domestic, your house, your household, the animals, our guests in our house, we're, we're supposed to take care of them, not kill them and eat them. You wouldn't kill and eat your house guests. Uh, we don't want to uh, be killing and eating the animals. It's time for us to transform to the caretaker species. If we do, instead of going extinct, we will transform and nonviolence should become uh, the norm. If we do, everything will begin to get better. The forests will return. As they do, they turn carbon dioxide into solid wood. The soils will, start, will stabilize and start replenishing themselves. They won't keep running into the rivers. The rivers will then run clean again. 
the oceans will begin to heal. They have tremendous regenerative properties if we allow them. Global warming will begin to reduce. Global hunger should disappear. We'll be able to grow more than enough plant-based food for everyone. And since lack of food and water are the driving forces for most wars, that can cease. Suffering and starvation can cease. Everything will get better, but it starts with homo sapiens transitioning their diet to a plant-based one. Mm -hmm.